So we're gonna move on uh, to the next agenda item, if that's all right with everybody, uh, which is the next step for the uh, community issues survey. <laughs> As I was mentioning before, the major issues that the community has identified, uh, problems, no surprise, water quality uh, is a big issue here, overdevelopment, traffic and safety on roads and waterways. So we have recently sent the survey results to County Commissioner Kevin Ruain, asking him to meet with some of us on the board to talk about specific steps that we can take together to address some of these issues. For example, and this is just an example right now, it's not something we're moving ahead on. Uh, when Kevin Ruane was the mayor of Sanibel, he installed traffic cams at key intersections to inform drivers of the best and worst times to go on and off the island. Could something like that, do you think, work here? So many people, you know, like we all know that during the winter season, it's very hard to get through Mount Lache. Uh, it's very, very slow and people are concerned about getting to work on time, getting to appointments, evacuating, medical problems, all of that. If we had traffic cameras at key points, do you think you or other people um, in the area would look at them and change their uh, driving times to significantly reduce the traffic buildup right there. What do you guys think? Let's let's just talk about it a little bit. If you have any thoughts on that issue. Ellen, I think you know my view on this. Uh, uh, I, I listened to Kevin's uh, presentation to uh, uh, the, the Pine Island Civic Association meeting and I got the distinct impression that they saw uh, a very low cost way of changing people's behavior. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he, they thought it was a very successful program. And those of you that know about how to set up a webcam, they are cheap, and cheap to maintain, and very, very helpful for uh, uh, residents. So I, I, I think we ought to, it's a uh, low hanging fruit to me. Uh, issue that we can bring to Kevin and said, we would like to uh, have the Lee County install the webcams, maintain them, and it, it ought to be some way that we can get something in return for our, our property taxes with Lee County. <laughs> would there yeah. be a website? I mean, are you envisioning some kind of a website where you would be able to go and look at the cameras yeah. or yeah. so you would actually be able to say, Oh, it's real busy in the beginning of Matt Lachey, but then it clears out very quickly or something like that. Well, just take a look at uh, Sanibel, uh, Google Sanibel website, uh, webcam. Okay. And you'll see they have one on the bridge going to Sanibel and like four or five other locations on Sanibel. Very easy to use to go from one camera to another to another to see what's going on in real time. Okay, uh, so there have been several comments in the chat of people saying they would use it. Um, if there are any other thoughts, you can always email uh, the GPICA or email me directly, hfox at umich.edu. I suppose I should put that in the chat or maybe Nadine can- uh, I, I can put it in, Helen. Okay. Um, yeah. The other thing that Sanibel has, in addition to the webcams, is an app that you can download onto your phone so you can look at it when you're out on the road. I just wanted to add that in. Yes. And that, you know, app development can be rather expensive. And so if we could pony on, they've already got the system set up and we just need to tie Pine Island into it, I think it would be inexpensive and I would think the county would support it. So someone has put in the chat, um, good idea. Has anyone ever done a car count with time of day? Does anybody know about that? They yes. do, they do they, those they counts have. periodically. Just, uh, oh, go ahead, Noel. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Lee County DOT has done uh, many traffic studies, uh, especially when we had the 8, 10, 9, 10 rule in mm -hmm. place. So uh, I was just going to put on here for everyone, Lee County DOT, we can contact them and get traffic counts at certain times of the day. They had uh, several different types of the during the day to reach that peak number. 
I, uh, I talked to uh, Lee County DOT over the past year, and I wanted to get somebody out here to talk about that. They did a traffic study last winter, and then they told me they didn't want to talk to us until the new commissioner was installed <laughs> because they wanted to, I don't know, CYA, that's all I can think of. Uh, but they have done a traffic study within the past year, and we haven't seen it. Might be something I guess I could pursue. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Right. Okay, so uh, we will uh, think about moving forward with that. Um, hopefully, with uh, people from Matt Lachey and Matt Lachey Civic Association, if they're also interested in this, um, probably this would, I don't know, I, I think this would benefit people from Pine Island a little more than it would people from Matt Lachey, uh, because we're the ones that have to go through that bottleneck and maybe even though they do um th maybe they're not quite as as slowed down as we are but they're also slowed down uh so okay we will uh look into that next uh quick item on the agenda is the wink tower and just a uh, a little maybe temporary but a little celebration that the variance application by the Fort Myers Broadcasting Company to put up a 110 foot Doppler radar tower on Pine Island has been withdrawn without explanation. And we want to thank so much uh, Jeffrey Waller for his great leadership and, and I believe uh, Deborah Swisher Hicks um, as well and other community members who stepped up and did incredible research on this and really got the word, I guess, to the right people. Um, so this is, uh, this is something we have to keep our eye on though, um, because there are sneaky things that happen <laughs> when we're not looking. Um, next item is the, it's just an announcement, um, the consolidation of special fire districts. I understand that, uh, Michael Drycorn is uh, representing the Matt Lachey Pine Island Fire Control Districts on a new statewide task force that's looking to increase efficiency and reduce costs, all of which sounds like a good idea, right? But um, Drycorn is concerned that if our independent fire district is consolidated, it would just become part of a bureaucracy managed from Fort Myers and we would lose even more elements of home rule that are slipping away from us um, in, in so many areas. Um, we we uh, can probably say that we're a unique area, our um, Greater Pine Island and the outlying islands that are also, I, go, I guess, all part of the special fire district that uh, would sort of become generic at that point. Well, I'd like to make a comment on that. Thank you, thank you, Norm. Uh, <laughs> well, well, first of all, uh, uh, no, the Outer Islands have their own fire department. Oh, okay. They're not part of part of our fire district. And I know the history on this whole issue, and it goes back to, back to Matt Caldwell when he was state representative. And it's because we have over 27 fire districts in Lee County. It's gotten to the point of being totally absurd. Yes. And every fire district has to have their own little pieces of equipment their own department. There's no coordination at all. It's just uh, a, a big burden on all the taxpayers throughout the county because uh, you take a look at our fire district, not that they're not doing an absolutely great job, but at the same time, we're, we're taxed uh, one of the highest, if not the highest tax fire district in the county. Yep. And, and it's one of the biggest items on our tax bill. Mm -hmm. So I understand they all want to keep their little fiefdoms. They all want to keep their department, their local uh, issue, but that's that's not what's best for the taxpayer. And so I agree with Matt Caldwell that, uh, matter of fact, I spoke with him about 10 years ago and, and asked him if there wasn't something he could do about this issue because it's just gotten totally out of control here in Lee County. So I'm, I'm glad to see the issue. I don't think it's going to go anywhere because uh, uh, the fire districts are all going to organize just like ours yep. and they're going to fight it and say, oh, well, we, you know, they're taking our local control away. And well, that's all baloney. You know, we, we need a professional fire department that serves all of the county. 
Okay. So that's that's my two cents worth. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, I'll, I'll add on to that, Noel. Um, I think I've been here 20 years, 25 years. This is probably the third consolidation study I've seen um, in the time since I've been here. So I'm not I'm not um, thinking anything is going to change, but that's uh, I don't either. Sense. Uh huh. Okay. So um, we'll keep our eye on it, but um, that's an interesting perspective. Thanks very much for that. The next issue uh, is uh, the the D and D bait shop uh, over there in Mount Lachey. So I just want to give you a little background, and then I'm going to ask other people with more knowledge than I have to jump in and talk about. Uh, what's going on with this right now. So this, and correct me if I am wrong on some of this, I, I, um, the city of Cape Coral right now is attempting to obtain land from the county to allow for a $12.7 million redevelopment of the land at the d, &D Bait and Tackle property that includes a boat launch site over there in Mount Lachey by Michelli's. The city of Cape Coral has owned the site since they bought it for $13 million out of foreclosure nine years ago. Cape Coral attempted to annex the site in 2016, but the annexation was overturned in a court case. Cape Coral now wants the county to allow that project to stretch the borders of its parking lot in order to use land that could be used at some future time to widen Pine Island Road between Michelli's and uh, Veterans Parkway. Mm. The county says it has no plans to widen the road. Um, and uh, some of us find it concerning that Commissioner Kevin Ruane was mentioned in the Fort Myers news press as supporting some type of agreement so that the city could enlarge the parking lot. So um, any of you who have more knowledge about this. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to, to speak to that. Uh, well, first of all, the $13 million they spent was on hundreds of parcels. Th these are just one parcel out of the most valuable part of the property was the Seven Islands property, the 13 million. So when they use a figure like that, that's, that's fake. And then, when the county talks about their easement, uh, it's not just a simple issue to uh, turn over the easement to the city. First of all, right now, I think our uh, water company was being remiss by not putting a letter out to Kevin Ruane and letting him know that our water line runs in that easement. And how are we gonna get to our water line to service it if it's under the parking lot. I mean, we could go in there now and dig it up. And the next thing is, that is within our fire service district. So we will have to serve that facility there. Do we have adequate equipment to serve the facility that they're planning? All of these issues need to be addressed and it's up to our fire board and it's up to our water board to write letters to Kevin and bring these issues forward. So it's not just a simple thing. And the next thing is, who's gonna get stuck with the cost of traffic control in that area? I mean, we see what a nightmare it is right now. The traffic is backed up all the way to the stoplight here in the afternoons every day. So how do we deal with all of the traffic that's gonna go in and out of that facility? And then and Lascelles doesn't have adequate parking now. So we're gonna create more uh, 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 growth there in an area bringing more traffic impacts when we have done nothing to solve the current traffic impacts. So I think the county needs to be aware that, and, and we as a civic association needs to write a letter, you know, outlining these issues ourselves just to make sure the job gets done. Because this all needs to be brought forward before this thing moves any further down the road. That's what I think we need to do. I just have a few things to add to that. Uh, uh, there is a bi pedestrian bicycle path yep. being planned by Florida DOT. It's about five years off from completion. 
they I, I talked to uh, and uh, Stephen Andrews a couple of weeks ago, and they just hired a consultant. Now that bicycle path could go on either side of Pine Island Road, but it's going to go from the four-way stop all the way out to Burnt Store Road and hook into the bicycle paths they already have out there on on Veterans and down Burnt Store. It'd be great. I mean, you you take your life in your hands if you ride a bicycle across Little Pine Island or Burnt Store Road. Oh, yes, Burnt Store Road, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but this is five and a half miles. It's going to be eight to 10 feet wide. They'd like to make it 12, but that's all the room they've got for. But it appears, and this is from talking to uh, to uh, Stephen Andrews, it's going to go on the north side. That's the side of the road where this property that they want to acquire from uh, the county is. So you take out eight to 10 feet for a sidewalk and a bicycle path. And when the setback from the road, because you can't have it right up against the road, we've seen what happens on Stringfellow when you do that. Lady lost a life there three years ago. Uh, plus a setback from the from their property. There's no room to give them much land. It really isn't. Not if we're going to do this. And I think it's a it's a really worthy project. I don't know that Kevin Nuwaney knows that this is even in the pipeline, but I think we need to bring it to his his attention. And uh, as Noel touched on, the Chellies and some of the local businesses currently use that property to, for their employee parking. This is going to be a real dent for Michelli's if they have to park their employees in their parking lot. There's about 20 cars there any given day, and those are all employee parking. Plus, they want to compete with a municipally subsidized restaurant with Michelli's. Now, that's just not fair. I mean, I don't think any municipality has a right to go into the food service business unless it's, it has something to do with a railroad station or a bus stop. You know, this that. I, I don't think they have any right to do it. They've got a restaurant out on Cape Coral Yacht Club. Uh, so they think that this is a moneymaker farm. So they're going to go into the restaurant business. The other thing, and uh, thanks to uh, Michael Hannon and uh, also uh, a local newspaper, the Pine Island Eagle, for bringing this up, Florida statutes 418.02 and 418.20 prohibit municipalities from developing parks and, and uh, recreational things outside the municipal boundaries. Well, since Cape Coral was unsuccessful in annexing that property, they have no right to do what they're planning on doing, whether it's a boat launch, a parking lot, a bait shop, or a restaurant. They don't have a right to do that. It's illegal. Now, I got a call from Mike Hannon. I think most of you guys know that fellow, and uh, he's a pretty good lawyer. And he, he brought this up, and he said he was interested in working with the uh, Pine Island Civic Association on this uh, on this problem that we're facing and uh I, I don't have any problem with that i was glad to hear from him to be honest with you so then they haven't done anything about a traffic study to deal with the increased traffic uh i think we need to demand a public hearing on this and the uh we need to get you know air this out and uh i, I would like i mean it, i don't want to usurp the uh chairman's gavel but I think we should uh, have a discussion about this and also maybe entertain a motion on how we should proceed forward. Yeah, I'd like people to just- Can I just uh, add something before we do that? Because you haven't mentioned it. My other concern is the canal itself. Um, that place where it comes down from Cape Coral and then turns and goes past Maselli's, they call that crash corner. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're gonna put boat launches there, it's gonna, it's gonna make it even worse. And also we haven't talked about seven islands and with all the traffic coming down there as well. Um, I think they're planning also to put a marine uh, place to gas up their boats. So it, it's all tied into one thing. And that canal, which also now is dumping garbage into our, our harbor, will just get that much worse. So I think that needs to be included as well. Oh, anyone else who would like to uh, speak up on this, um, you can put a quick comment. Yeah. Um, uh, Seidler, uh, it, it seems to me that Cape Coral is spending millions buying up property, trying to start restaurants, uh, interfering in other uh, other properties, other, other towns, et cetera, or unincorporated places. It seems to me if they spent some of this money on the water quality to start with, we wouldn't have all these other problems. They're yeah. just getting their nose in places they don't want, don't belong. And uh, 
you know, they were told once before to uh, step outside and leave it alone. And they aren't quitting. And this is wrong. They're just, they're, they're misspending public money. And maybe it's not our money, but I think the people in uh, uh, Cape Coral ought to be aware of it. This is, this is wrong. The bike path is an important issue. People, uh, you go see people going by it. 40, 50 miles an hour, and these poor bikes are trying to stay upright. I think it's a wonderful plan to have the bike path in. Um, and, and Cape Coral can just step outside. We mind their own business. Okay, so other other thoughts? I, I wonder if, uh, Noel, if you would give me the information about the water main issue that you talking about since I'm on the water board. Yes, the, uh, I sat down with uh, John Kamek and uh, and is it Laurie or Laura? Your Laura, Laura, Laura. And I went over this issue with them previously, so they're well aware of it. So they they know uh, all about it, and they can show you the maps and everything. Okay, thanks. Okay, any other thoughts uh, before maybe we somebody come up with a motion that we can yeah, vote? I got a motion. If somebody like? Can I can I read it? Uh, looks like you can. Please. Scott. We're going to get discussion after a motion in a second. Yes. Um, okay. Here's my motion. The GPICA will send a letter to the, or an email to the commissioners uh, expressing their opposition to donating the land to Cape Coral. Simple as that. I'll second it. Uh, okay. Discussion before the second. I and think we should add some specifics to it and reasons. Well, we'll get them in the letter. I mean, we're not going to just, oh, okay. uh, you know, just you, say we're getting it. Can you talk with Mike Hannon be, uh, before? I'm sure he would have some ideas. I mean, if he has gone through this before, he might have some ideas about what to include in that letter. We've, uh, I, I talked to him at length about it. I know what he's thinking. Okay. Yeah, he's, I mean, I, I, I mean, we could put in that we want to work with Matt Lachey Civic Association. We could put that in the motion if you wanted, but I, I don't want to stumble the motion because no, no, no. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's more issues in the motion. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we represent Matt Lachey anyway. So there is a, a comment in the chat. Will the letter go to the city also? Yes. Sounds like a good idea. I don't, yeah, we should definitely copy the city on it. Okay. I think yes. that's good, yeah. you know, and I think we can yeah. draft a letter and ask Matt Lachey if they want to sign on to it. Um, but I think we need to move forward, even if they end up not doing a joint effort with us. I agree. And we also forward a letter to the water and um, fire department too, so they're aware of what we're doing. Yes. That's a good idea. Okay. I got hey, it. Uh, so Scott, can you uh, read your motion again? Okay. Um, the Greater Pine Island Civic Association will send a letter to the county commissioners expressing the GPICA's opposition to donating the land along Pine Island Road by D&D Bait to Cape Coral. Could you say a county commission and other agencies? Okay. Okay. And I second it. Uh, all right, seconded by, by Noel, huh? Is that who yes. said? Okay, now in order to vote, we have a lot of people who I cannot see. So I'm wondering. Um, Can you just do a voice vote, Helen? And if, um, if okay. and, and ask for the nays, because I think there will be fewer okay. people against it than Good. for it. You okay. Just ask for without opposition or something like that, too. Okay, well, we can, we can ask for all in favor. Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? All right, without opposition. Animus. Very good. Well, thank you, we'll get right on that. Well, the last issue that we have um, right now on our agenda, even though it's 740, is the Basilla Island Seaport. Basilla Island Seaport is at the very north end of Pine Island, up near where I live. And I often go down there and I uh, have noticed that um, Main Street, which is where Stringfellow Road curves around and you have the beautiful view of the water, that becomes Main Street and Main Street stops right there at Captain Khan's restaurant. So 
So that, that there's been increased traffic um, along that road. Um, and previously, uh, and, and, and let me say that the marina, this marina is in back of Captain Khan's. And this is marina has been there for a while, um, but it, it, the boat traffic through there has been increasing. So according to one of the people I talked to down there, um, they said on some days more than 100 boats a day are launched now through uh, in the um, seaport. So previously on that site, right in back of Captain Khan's, there were 100, about 130 trailers whose residents used the boat ramp for their own recreation. And at that time, apparently they built docks. This was before uh, people really applied for permits. Uh, perhaps, and so they just went ahead and built those docks. But uh, the docks were relatively few in number, and so the traffic on Main Street was manageable. Those trailers were removed, and the land is now being used as a parking lot and also as boat storage uh, for the commercial marina. The marina uh, also attracts boaters from outside the area who drive down Main Street to access the boat launch, which is cheap. You know, it's ten dollars a day to launch your boat, and so naturally people will be drawn to that area. So, according to some of the residents, um, the uh, the commercial marina, Bosil Island Seaport, has been cited in the past for operating without authorization. However, their site, their latest citation, was suddenly voided, and no public hearing was scheduled. So, the residents thought some thing is up. This concerns them um, because they believe that that marina may be operating illegally. Mm. In addition, the residents are concerned that the newly planned upgrades to the marina may increase the traffic on Main Street even further. <clears throat> so recently, the owner of the property, Robert Gunther, was issued a permit from the Florida Department of Environmental Protection to upgrade the existing tumors and boat launch. And this was the link to the DEP document and the study that they did was right there. Yeah, like maybe it's put in the chat. You can see it on our website and it also was sent to you uh, with this invitation to get on tonight. So Mr. Gunther, according to the DEP, seems to have uh, successfully demonstrated that the renovations that he's planning will not adversely affect water quality in Back Bay. That's the big bay part of Jug Creek that they, they, um, the boats are launched into. That the upgrades will not hurt the manatees, the fish or other wildlife. That, that it will not <laughs> impact public recreation or navigation in Jug Creek, even though we know uh, that several deaths have happened with boats speeding through Jug Creek. And it will not add any more boat slips to the ones already there. That seems to be the main point that they're trying to make. They're saying, oh no, we were not, we're not increasing traffic because we'll end up with the same number of boats docked here as, we've all, all, as we already have. However, they're not talking about the boats that are coming in from outside that don't have boat slips there. So then, uh, although there were previous plans for development of the two upland properties that are now being used as a parking lot, the owner currently has no plans, according to the DEP study, to make any changes to them. Uh, but, you know, I think residents down there, from what I can understand, they're, they're not all of one voice. You know, people have different ideas about what ought to happen. Um, but the main street is only 20 feet wide. Two boat trailers cannot pass each other, you know, even with fairly reasonably sized boats. And uh, walkers, bicyclers, cars that visit the restaurants um, and golf carts are imperiled by all the traffic, the more increased traffic there on main street. So, um, <laughs> If the upland, upland property is further developed at some later date, the traffic problem, of course, well, might, I guess, increase depending on how they develop it. So my understanding is that Scott, our former president, Scott Wilkinson, sent a letter to the DEP on September 4th last year requesting a public hearing, but 
receive no answer. So there, there are people that have been emailing, calling us that are quite disturbed about all this and want something to be done. However, um, when I talked to a resident several weeks ago, she said that they, they did not have plans to um, ask for a public hearing on the DEP report because the DEP report looks on the up and up, according to at least some people. It looks for what they're looking at. It looks like, yeah, all these things will not adversely affect anything in the water uh, or any make any problems. But they weren't looking at Main Street. They weren't looking at the number of boats that are being launched. They weren't looking at any possible future uh, launches of boats or traffic on Main Street. So the question is, uh, do we as a GPICA want to do anything about this? If so, what is the path forward? Who are the authorities? Is it the DEP or is it some other way of uh, sl either slowing this down or looking to see if this seaport is actually operating legally or what? Well, first, the, uh, uh, the DEP can issue their uh, permit to construct the docks. Yeah. But then the, uh, the dock builder has to get a permit from the county. And I think that there's going to be some problems there because the property is only zoned for about 40 something, around around 40 units. So you don't need 50 docks to serve 40 units. And then uh, there's going to have to be a, a traffic study because the people that were utilizing the docks previously were all residents. They lived there. They weren't coming on and off. Yeah. And now we're talking about people coming in and out because there's no residential structures on the property. So all of these issues have not been addressed at all. And maybe the DEP isn't the proper place to address them, but uh, I uh, reached out to one of the leading authorities on dock permitting for the Corps of Engineers, but I think maybe all of us know by now what uh, the Corps of en Engineers were able to do under the last administration. They were able to uh, totally uh, give up any rights to uh, oversee permitting in Florida, and they gave all those rights to the DEP now. So previously, if this had gone through the Corps of Engineers, they would have had to address the uh, fish and wildlife issues. That area has false information in the DEP report. They said that uh, this guy, Hans Wilson, uh, makes a statement that there are no uh, uh, small tooth uh, sawfish uh, habitat in that area. They are a highly protected fish. And we know there was just in the, our paper today was one on the cover of the eagle showing that one was caught in Matlache. And so we know that that is prime habitat. And then it, uh, uh, so the, the dangerous uh, navigation high hazards in the area, those would have all been addressed by the Corps. But now the DEP is doing that and they don't have the personnel to do all these different issues. So they just do a, a quick uh, environmental report and that's it. So I don't know whether we could still do anything or not. Uh, Carol Crane seems to think that we can. And she, like I said, was in dock permitting for many years here in on Pine Island. And uh, so uh, any, there's nobody that knows the issue better than her. And uh, so I, I put her in touch with, with Helen because uh, I'm really, uh, I, I'm not familiar with what the DEP can do and can't do anymore. They're supposed to do all of the same things the Corps would have done, but I don't see that happening anywhere, not just here, anywhere in Florida. And uh, so I think we could, uh, we've already written a letter. Uh, uh, I don't know uh, other than, uh, and uh, Carol has uh, reached out to John Englehart who's the area director for the DEP in Fort Myers. And he says he's willing to help us. And so they're looking into the issue now, but we don't have much time because you have 14 days from the time that they issued that permit to uh, file a, uh, an appeal. So if we're gonna do something, we need to do it very quickly. 
but uh, you know exactly what we can do in terms of appealing. Uh, we can maybe uh, list all of these different issues that were not addressed and say, we don't think that your study addresses these issues adequately. Yeah, a question in my mind is whether to move ahead without the resident associations and the other groups that have been meeting of uh, people who live there on the North End along Main Street, um, because they were talking about hiring a lawyer, but they didn't want to come. I asked them if they would come and make a statement uh, at our meeting tonight. They didn't want to do that. Um, so I don't want to step on, you know, step in front of people. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, these issues, especially things that affect Jug Creek and you know, that affects more than just the people along Main Street. That's, well, that's right. my yes. comment. Uh, it yeah. doesn't affect just those people. It affects all of us. So yes. I think that the GPICA needs to step forward, at least send a letter back to the, you know, reminding them that we did send a letter, that we did request a public meeting and that we never heard back. And maybe we need to let the commissioners have a heads up on what might be coming with a letter to them as well. And we need to address it to John Engelhardt because he never got a copy of the letter. Well, should we should we request the uh, administrative hearing just to you know stop the wheels and give us some time? Yeah. Yes. The, Absolutely. Uh, I don't know how to do that, but well, I we got to do it by Friday. Um, yeah, Carol ha Carol called me just before. We came on, I asked her to write me a letter or I'll talk to her, uh, but she has the specific steps that we need to take. Absolutely, yeah, she's the best. Yep, she is. Yeah, she's good. Do we need I a motion go. or? Uh... Yeah, it would be good to have a motion so that we have it on a record. Uh, so we're gonna I go ahead and so request moved. the administrative hearing. Yes, I'm, I second. Well, I, I didn't make a motion yet. Oh, I thought you did, sorry. Well, whatever you say, I'm seconding. Oh, hold on. All right, let me try to <laughs> gather my thoughts. You know, maybe you're already together on this. Would you like to make a motion? Well, I, I move that uh, we uh, work with uh, Carol Crane to draft a letter uh, to the DEP requesting a hearing on the uh, 50 uh, space uh, dock proposal for uh, uh, Bokelia. It's an administrative hearing, right? Yes. Yeah. And I would add, we send it registered mail receipt requested. Someone suggested Email and that. registered mail. This, this paperwork was filed on February 19th, and it says it's only 14 days, so it's got to get done quickly. Yeah. Yes. Is that uh, working days, do you know? Doesn't specify. Yeah. We're going to do it by Friday. Let's not screw Yeah. Out. Okay. Well, we can get uh, Noel, Scott, and Helen work with Carol and get that letter done. Yep. Oh, thank you for another work assignment, Sherry. <laughs> what the heck? Yeah. What, what, are you too busy to get Sherry, involved in this? Do you think goal? you could draft the letter for us? <laughs> I, 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 I can't. Uh, I, I think Carol's going to draft it for us. Yeah. Uh, I could take. I, I could work on it once we get Carol's letter. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll get us in touch. No. Okay. So the motion is on the floor. We've had discussion. Is there a second to this motion? I'll so move. Can okay. I read it? Yes, please read it. And then we'll ask for a second okay. again. Uh, Carol Crane will draft a letter on behalf of the GC, GPICA. I'm, I'm still writing here. So give me a second. Uh, Wait, I don't think we can have Carol do it. No, no, we're saying we will we have she'll to work it. with us to draft yeah, the letter. She'll draft it on behalf of us. Yeah, she'll work with us to help draft General to draft a letter asking for an a, a administrative hearing on the 50 space doc proposal. And Bosilla. And Bosilla. Yeah. And can we request that the meeting be held here? I, I don't know how that works. No, it'll be in Fort Myers, but in right. Fort Myers usually well, downtown. Fort Myers, Fort Myers, but I'm thinking maybe Tallahassee instead. But okay. Oh. Okay, so uh, okay, so that's the motion. I second it. Who, made the, who, made, who made, made the motion? Who made who made the motion? Oh, I did. So, All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sherry has, I believe, seconded this motion. Second. All in All right. favor, please say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Thank you very much. We will get right on it and do it. Are there any other issues or announcements? Can we keep talking about that for a second? You sort of got yeah. ahead before I had a chance to say anything. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Thank you. One of the things that really annoys me about this 59-page uh, proposition is that it's clearly in the public interest. And if you go on um, leapod.org, you can see where uh, Mr. Gunter lives. And his idea of the public interest has nothing to do with Pine Islanders that came here or have lived here for the quiet, easy, laid back um, atmosphere. And this guy wants to, you know, just go whoopee and he's going to bring in cars and trucks on a road that's too narrow to have heavy equipment. And uh, that's going to cause all sorts of problems to the people on both sides of that construction. And it's going to be done on both sides of the of the um, area um, north and south instead of dividing it up. So it's gonna go on and just be chaos. Um, also the, the environmental whatever, not once. I read that thing about eight times and it doesn't say anything about uh, the water quality. Um, but I found it on page 13 of the uh, drawings, finally, 13 of 19 of the drawings. And it says, uh, submerged aquatic vegetation consists of red drift algae, philantaneous or whatever, green algae, and green feather algae. There are no sea grasses. So, I mean, we're talking about already having water quality that's a problem. Uh, the fishes and whatnot, let's keep them. We want sawfishes there. We want the manatees there. Let's not kill them off with all this red tide and garbage. But his playing all sorts of games with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, uh, boat slips, etc. If, if something is needed, fine. But he's talking about um, a huge economic uh, whatever uh, that's going to cause trouble. They're going to be, they can talk about putting in barriers because of the, the uh, um, uh, whatever, cloudiness of the water. I'm, I'm so upset. It's unbelievable. <laughs> um, and it's that clearly in the public interest garbage that uh, blows my mind. Apparently, this was a historic um, uh, boat yard or whatever facility originally, um, and it, it was grandfathered, the facility. And then the leases have changed on a regular basis, year after year, and there's no explanation. They want to, they just, everybody's going to get their little bit in. And, and it's like Pine Island Road and Cape Coral trying to help themselves. This is ridiculous. It should be stopped in any way possible. Um, the 14 days garbage doesn't give anybody time to think, um, but if you request a formal hearing, they do. Um, they, uh, the number of slips, they say again, it's not gonna increase it, but at one point they say there's gonna be 59 slips. There are not 59 slips. And some of those slips are gonna be considerably larger than what were there. Um, even the the um, um, uh, the fishing pier is going to have uh, space for one huge ship on the right, and then a bunch of smaller boats. Um, and um, I don't know. You read the paperwork, and it's like a shell game. They've got so much stuff jammed in there, mixing it around. And the way they talk about it, if they were divided into a number of different separate plants, at least north and south divided, but there is no way. What are they going to charge these people? These are local people. Have anybody asked the fit, the boat owners what they think? And what are they going to get charged in the future? I mean, they do have uh, pump out systems and all that. And they talk about uh, being careful to clean water and, and no pollutants. And that all sounds wonderful until you realize that they never talked about the water quality to start with. So I'm not really impressed with these guys. I well, guess thank, you. thank you for all that. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so here's a comment in the chat. The draft notice says they will be authorized for no more than 84 vessels and boring outside of designated slips. So it sounds like we do need this hearing. We have passed uh, this motion. We will get that letter out before the end of the week. And uh, 
If there are uh, no more comments, I think it's time to close. Um, I would like to say one quick thing. Go ahead, Claudia. Um, I, it, the, the woman that came tonight was just lovely. And she talked about lots and lots of lovely okay. things. <laughs> but having been involved with all of this, we need someone or an organization to coordinate all of this because there are so many overlaps of things being done. I know that your husband talked about testing. Last year, we financed um, $7,000 machines because the local fishermen are going out and testing the waters. Mm -hmm. Calusa water keepers are testing the waters. There was a federal agency working with the captains for clean water. They're all doing the same thing spending money doing the same thing and there's no one to coordinate it at all the local colleges are doing it so we keep hearing the same things over and over and over again and nothing gets done because everybody's got their own little empire and they're not coordinating and neither none of them have enough money to get anything done the point i'm making is we're spinning our wheels. We're going nowhere. We've heard all of this for years and nothing is getting done because they're all spending money doing the same things over and over again. And we're not big enough to fight Tallahassee. So yeah. I would suggest that we look into finding some kind of an organization to coordinate all of these things so we don't reduplicate and um, move on from there. That's my, my two cents tonight. Thank you, Claudia. No, that gives us something to definitely think about. I mean, the, the presenter seemed to be saying it's the politicians that are standing in the way. Um, Claudia is uh, pointing to another issue that, you know, even if we address that, the politicians are still going to be standing in the way. So that that is also something to keep. But in if we all, if all of these groups united, and then address the politicians, we might have some more clout. But I've heard, you know, presentations like this ad infinitum since I moved to Pine Island, and they all say the same thing. And we're okay. spinning our wheels. We're going nowhere. Yeah. How many times do you have to count dead fish? I know it. Well, you know you got a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, on a positive note, we, we're, we have things to do. We're going to move forward on these things we can do. And I want to thank people uh, for coming tonight, for their participation. And uh, uh, contact us by email, especially if you want to work with us on any of these issues. We really welcome that. So I think we're going to say good night now, unless there's anything I have forgotten. Motion to adjourn. A second. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Good meeting. Thanks. It's good. Go ahead. Okay. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Thanks for running this, Helen, too. Sure. Thanks, Helen. Bye-bye. Bye, Carl. Bye, honey. Bye, Sherry. <laughs>